Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we're gonna start with the BAP graph series of all times. Mark my words, it will be the BAP as of April 2023. Whatsoever graph series are in the market, it will be the BAP of all of them. I'm not saying on YouTube only, but on any of the paid platforms too. Mark my words. I have gone through every of those graph series. I know exactly what are the flaws in those, how it is very hard for students to actually study it. I'm not saying if you have, let's say one year, you can study it. But if you have, let's say very limited amount of time and you want to study it fast, efficiently, intuitively, it's not made for you. So to make sure everything is fast, intuitive and efficient, the graph series right here is for you the BAP graph series. So yeah, without further ado, let's start. Firstly, graph. What is a graph? Graph, it can be defined as a group of vertices and edges. In entire graph, wherever you see some nodes or vertices, some edges or wires, so you can easily say, oh, it looks like a graph. A tree, it can also be termed as a graph because it also has some nodes and some edges. So a tree can also be termed as a graph. Next, we'll see more when we move, actually move on to the algorithms of graph. First thing we're understanding the graph as a data structure, right? Then we also go on to the algorithms of these graphs. But after that, we'll see, okay, how graph can actually be used in algorithms. But as no one has ever told you about the real life applications of graph, let's see some real life applications but before that firstly let's see how a graph you will see look like how the nodes and edges in the graph will look like the nodes as you can see every number is actually a vertex or a node it's called a node or a vertex you can see a gola right here a circle right here all these are nodes and these nodes are connected by a wire you can see right by a line this line which is connecting two nodes is called a vertex is called an edge is called an edge now how we represent a graph like in an ad hoc way not the actual programming way, but in an ad hoc way a graph it can be represented by its vertex and edges by its vertex and edges so how many vertices are there in this graph a b a r y a n so vertices are five five nodes are there how many edges are there one edge is right here, one is here, one is here, one is here, and one is here. So every edge is connecting two vertices, which means that I can easily connect one edge between A and R, one edge between A and A, one edge between R and Y, one edge between A and R, one edge between A and N, one edge between N and Y. Thus, I can actually show how a graph would look like. Okay, we got a rough idea, a rough idea of what a graph would look like. Let's see, before actually moving on to the graph algorithms, let's see, what is the real life use case of this graph? Or why I should study it, how it will actually reflect in the real life applications, real life algorithms, real life optimizations in graph. First and the foremost, which you have used daily is Google Maps. In maps, if you choose a source and a destination, Google map shows you multiple paths, right? If I choose a Delhi to Bangalore, then it will show me multiple paths to go to that particular place. It will also show me the shortest path to actually reach from this particular source to this particular destination. All this are the nodes of the graph or the vertices of the graph and they are being connected by what? By some edges, which is the path. So with this, I can actually get to know the shortest path between any two places. So it will actually show me all the paths, which means I, if it is my source, if it is my destination, it will show me all the paths. Then it is going to all the paths. So actually I can choose the shortest path of all these paths. It is how a graph is entirely used in Google Maps also in the flights a flight is standing here and needs to go to that location it also uses all the possible paths to reach to that particular destination in the shortest 
टाइम पॉसिबल अनदर ह्यूज केस इज सोशल नेटवर्किंग साइट्स लिंकड इन इंस्टाग्राम ट्विटर यू सो वन थिंग इफ ऑन लिंकड इन यू फॉलो मी एंड आई पोस्ट समथिंग यू विल सी इट राइट सो इफ आर्यन फॉलोज आयुष आई फॉलो सम वन लेट्स ए आयुष सो वॉट्स एवर ही पोस्ट आई विल सी इट but he is not following me so whatsoever i will post he will not see it right it is kind of directed which means it has a direction it is called a directed graph which has a direction we will see further what is the directed graph but i'm just saying okay aryan follows ayush so whatsoever ayush will post aryan will see but ayush is not following aryan so Ayush will not see whatsoever Aryan will post. If on the other hand, if Ayush and Aryan both follows each other, so whatsoever Ayush posted, Akshay will see. Akshay and Ayush both follow each other, so whatsoever Akshay will post, Ayush will see. Whatsoever Ayush will post, Akshay will see. Both in their feeds will see each other's post. It is how our social networking sites where the network network. connection is being built from one person to another next big thing is in circuit designing you see that the circuits are being designed like a very huge circuit in your classes also you must have designed these kind of circuits so in this circuits the actual real life circuits they are designed to actually minimize the number of resistors or wires being used so i just need to minimize this number of length of the wire or the number of resistors so ultimately maybe i can transform this particular graph see here every resistor is a node and every edge every wire is an edge so i just can transform this particular graph into a small graph i can transform this big graph maybe to a small graph and thus i can transform my huge circuit to a small circuit so ultimately in huge devices to actually run it faster i want as small as possible my circuit should be as small as possible it is to actually make your circuit as efficient as small as possible you use graph in that not only this but also you must have ins installed intellij run your projects webd projects or android projects you must have gone through dependencies maven dependency gradle dependency and all that stuff you see right firstly you need to have a right jdk version firstly you need to have an intellij and then after that you need to have a right jdk version and then you can have install the maven dependency and then you can actually load the project so you saw what happened everything is dependent on each other which means one thing is dependent on another next is dependent on another next is dependent on another next is dependent on another it is nothing but a graph actually you can also see A module two is dependent upon the Jackson module. Next is dependent upon this Kotlin reflect. Then another module. Then another module. So it is how a dependencies would work. That to install one dependencies, I need to have a previous dependency. It will actually see it. It is called as a topological sort. But we will see how it will actually happen. That in order we should have. but it will actually represent us in a form of a graph and thus it will represent us in form of a directed graph directed which means a direction is there from here to here and not vice versa but we will actually see what this directed graph means later on also another thing is in webd in webd when you actually make a tom tree it's very 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 standard that document object model you can make of any webd model Where let you have this document. After that, you have this HTML. Then head in in the head you have this title, and in the title you have this text. In the body you have this element, next element. So it is how a graph will be made. A document, then an HTML, then a head. In this a body, and so on and so forth. So we can also use this graph visualization. in the web applications also and it's very 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 common next is very amazing interesting thing 
paint bucket tool you saw one thing whenever let's say you have made something in paint as these four blocks and you bring your paint bucket tool to to let's say this portion so this entire portion will get colored by some paint this entire portion will get colored by other paint this entire portion will get colored by other paint it is how a paint bucket tool will work every node is connected see in this particular area every node is connected to every other node right so what will happen as soon as you fill it with one color every color will go on to every node and then same goes so every color will go on to every node so just spreading out we will see it's actually called as a flood fill algorithm but it is how in real life our paint bucket tool will work where your each cell is actually a pixel in terms of a matrix and it's actually a vertex and your connection between those cells is nothing but an edge between those cells to actually make that graph so here also your graph is being used next is nothing but our routing algorithms or basically how you communicate with satellites with from phone to phone like let's say you call someone your network goes to particular router which actually goes to another router which goes to another router and then it goes to that particular receiver so how this connection is being built it's actually also on the basis of this graph let's say this satellite wants to communicate with our station then it will actually go on to multiple every satellite is actually a node a node and this connection is nothing but an edge so i'll just choose okay which one is having smaller time which one can reach faster and then with this i can actually make a graph and also it works in the real life, real life applications when you just call someone then it go then it moves to the nearest router nearest station you have around you and then which actually go on to another station around you and then actually go on to another station around that particular thing and ultimately it reach to the final station where actually is the receiver and same is the actual in the routing internet protocols also that you have your computer you have your particular station where actually the internet is coming from then you have this multiple routers so it is how our routers will work that okay all these nodes are the routers across the globe and the edges are nothing but the time taken to flow from one router to another it's actually how it is actually being used in our real life applications last but not least is our graphs in deep learning as you know the deep learning is entirely on the basis of neural networks so in the tensor flow and in the neural networks everything is based on the graphs so basically we also build the computation graph which help us to optimize the algorithm optimize how how come a neuron is here a hair here here so it just needs to have the minimum path so we we'll actually see what's the minimum path what are you saying about paths but actually you can see okay every neuron you can consider it as a node and connection as an edges so we just try to optimize our paths our run time our complexity by just building computation graphs so i hope that you guys understood real life applications of graph and there are infinite more use cases for graphs in real lives and we will just go on see as we move on in the lectures i hope that you guys the you guys got the intuition of how the graph is being used in a real life and next you will see some of the terms of real uh, of graphs and after that we will just actually go on to the actual algorithms of graph which will actually help us build these real life applications hope that you guys liked it and just compare with the first video of every other people thing place you have watched and just let me know so i hope that you guys like it and see you guys in the next video goodbye take care bye